goal and purpose is really to assess the needs of the community, identify barriers, both local and federal barriers to transportation, uh, transportation opportunities, and identify opportunities to improve service countywide. Um, multimodal transportation is very important to Muskegon County, uh, and we have a good system in place now, but um, there are improvements that can be made. Uh, the transportation options need to serve the urban and rural populations, and that this will provide access to jobs, to schools, and uh, to the community in general to, to make their way around the county and uh, uh, eventually connect up into other uh, counties. Uh, a well-coordinated network of transportation options does provide economic benefits and will enhance the community and allow people to uh, move about more freely. Uh, the issues that were identified were a high level of need for the population, low-income populations and the unemployed. Uh, the social services, uh, there, there's a great deal of social service spending uh, that with uh, some new programs put into place can lower those costs and provide uh, more efficiencies. And then finally, there is the uh, ability to improve service and meet the needs uh, of the community. And there were two barriers that we found. And that was the lack of local match and the lack of professional staff to coordinate the various 
different funding opportunities. And that's this giant spaghetti bowl of different uh, <laughs> programs, federal programs and local programs, state programs that are um, just very hard to decipher. So all of those, uh, with, with the program that's proposed, we'll be able to take closer looks at, at uh, these programs and uh, decide which grants would work for the community here and uh, hopefully bring some of that funding back home. Uh, MATS is achieving a lot with limited resources. We have great cost effectiveness here, and uh, as you mentioned, <laughs> our ridership is going up uh, precipitously. Every, every month it seems to be going up, and, and it's very uh, encouraging to see that coming here as a, a new residence, and uh, having working with transportation is very interesting to see how the, the levels of ridership are going up at both uh, MATS and the airports. It's, it's quite uh, interesting. Um, the human service organizations uh, that we will uh, provide transportation options to uh, are, and that will work with are um, Pioneer Resources, the Disability Connection of West Michigan, Trinity Health Community Benefits Office, and the United Way of the Lakeshore. These, these uh, organizations all work with MATS now to a certain extent, but there are ways that we can work more closely with them to provide some uh, additional uh, efficiencies. Uh, we can increase our, our potential as a transit provider uh, through a number, of, uh, a number of ways. One of them is overall ridership and uh, ridership by transit dependent populations and uh, service availability and coverage. <coughs> Fewer contracts, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this one uh, relative to the other communities in West Michigan, uh, some of the problems that we've identified are lower overall ridership and ridership by transit, transit dependent populations, lower service availability, fewer contracts, and no millage to provide a local match for the federal uh, grants that are available. The next slide shows what mobility management can do uh, for the community and for the, specifically for the riders and the people that use our system. Uh, the tactical day-to-day -day operations matches the riders with the services. Longer-term uh, strategic planning uh, digs in and tries to find exactly what the riders need, and it works all together with operations, public transit, uh, human and social service, and then car carpooling and volunteer services. So all of these things have to work together for the uh, uh, mobility management program to work well. Opportunities for improvement, both federal and local, are a lack of investment and um, coordination and planning for multimodal transportation, uh, Medicaid and human services, and the, the transit disconnect between those. Uh, there are ways that we can uh, work through these federal programs to uh, provide better opportunities for Medicaid recipients to get to doctor's offices, that sort of thing. Um, and we do not have staffing currently for mobility management. Again, the lack of local match comes up. And uh, co coordination with MATS for the locations for various services of the federal government, including vet the Veterans Outpatient Clinic, uh, which what I understand is now out near the airport. So that presents a problem for many of the veterans that originally would come downtown and then have to get, to the, uh, get out near the airport. So that is a problem uh, that we can improve upon. And then the uh, technology that we have is, is somewhat old and, and we need some uh, newer technology to keep track of the buses and scheduling. Uh, mobility management would allow us to, uh, to actually work closely and schedule trips so that people would, so, so that some of the trips would uh, as opposed to having maybe one or two people on a, on a particular trip, we could have more people uh, riding on the different vehicles and, and save some money that way. And then finally, there's limited public mar or limited marketing and public awareness of mass. There are ways that we can uh, uh, increase awareness by getting out into the community and um, making riders and potential riders aware of the different services that are offered. Uh, and mo mobility management and getting the word out about mobility management would help us increase our ridership, we believe. Uh, 
there are some funding opportunities. We can leverage a number of federal funds, uh, FTA 5307, 5311, and 5316, and 5317. All of these require local match. Uh, we can use non-DOT federal funds for the local match, seek new contracts and contributions, and again, it all comes back to coordination of these services to seek efficiencies. And um, another idea that came up through the report was to increase the number of municipalities that are contributing to the system. The Medicaid funding challenge is uh, a complex one. Uh, transportation expenditures in Muskegon County are second only to FTA's transportation funding. Uh, state level officials aren't required to coordinate with local providers. So this creates a disconnect right there. Uh, the local transit systems and higher quality private sector providers uh, are deprived of revenue. So if we worked closer with, with uh, Medicaid, we would be able to gain some revenues from that uh, relationship. Transit dependent individuals are forced to ride with less reliable and potentially unsafe providers. And we've uh, heard this anecdotally before that you know some of the some of the uh, vehicles that are used in uh, private systems are not up to the standards that uh, a public transportation system provides. So a couple of the recommendations there would be to work with the Department of Human Services to provide uh, reliable Medicaid transportation and develop a Medicaid billing system through MAPS. And that would be a, a very important uh, way to increase some of the revenues through MAPS. Some additional obstacles are increased engagement is needed by the Metropolitan Planning Organization uh, on some of these initiatives. Um, improved planning processes from all organizations so we all do work together and are talking to uh, go after certain grants and uh, institute certain programs. We need to coordinate across county lines and this has been uh, discussed at length. I believe uh, ways that we can connect to some of the other counties and make it easier for people to get into Northern Ottawa County and, and perhaps Kent County uh, through a variety of different uh, methods to get them into those areas, not only by mass, but working more closely with their transit systems. And then uh, work with the sustainability coordinator to uh, institute some new programs like carpooling and improved food, uh, facilities for pedestrians and, and cycling, bicycling. Uh, and again, the final one is including transport, transit representatives in land use planning decisions. And uh, I think to a certain extent that, that is happening now with Windsor Dick and some of the other organizations that we're working with. But I think uh, opening those discussions uh, uh, a little more would improve a lot of those processes and make those things happen on a more timely basis, those connections happen. Some of the other coordination opportunities are uh, coordinate with the federal government, Department of Labor, Community Development Block Grants, and Medicaid, and coordinate with the nonprofits and the key partners to uh, uh, work on a, the new Freedom Transportation Voucher Program and uh, work with the City of Muskegon Senior Transit Program to uh, look for some efficiencies there. The veterans, of course, are very important to our community. And uh, by working with the Battle Creek Veterans Administration, we can uh, work with decision makers about the future locations as we did, as I mentioned earlier, the current site now out near the airport is uh, away from the downtown area. So, um, we, we, if we work closer with the federal government, we could perhaps move that to a convenient location that would be uh, easier to access uh, by veterans through public transportation. And then uh, expand bus service, of course, for, for veterans. And um, this would be while the, the uh, facility is out there. Eleven technology, you know, that every six months, there are upgrades, so we can always be better uh, as far as the website goes. And I think it mainly f with uh, maps, I think the best thing to do <coughs> would be uh, increase outreach to our the communities that we're serving through uh, interactive trip planning, uh, better maps, uh, 
information about other ways to connect into other communities and uh, uh, beyond, and then provide links to the four regional not-for-profits that were mentioned earlier to help people find rides. The marketing and customer service experience, uh, investing in ongoing promotion, again, that's getting out into the community and making people aware of what we do have. Uh, we have been pretty effective in branding mats. Uh, the new bus stop system is working very well, and uh, that's another way to brand the system and make people more aware of what's happening. And then the public meetings and other uh, awareness events. And that's it. Uh, if there's any questions between Jim, myself, and Judy, you can probably answer them. How many other communities contribute to the bus system? I was on the speaking council report and I know we budgeted it for it here. I was just curious. Uh, at this time, there's five communities. Just five? Yes. Thank you. Um, don't, don't we have the go bus that already go out to the rural area? In some cases, it does, yes. Uh, if people call for rent. Um, is it only for like a, is it only like a camper? Jim Coons, the Skating Area Transit. The GO Bus service is only those over age 60 or persons with a disability. That is how we want. Do we advertise this at all? I mean, I don't know if it's part of this or not. <laughs> um, the GO Bus service is not widely advertised because we have limited capacity and it's pretty well filled by those that already know about it. Good. moving along uh, there there were ideas uh, about the potential of moving the terminal and that uh, would be very cost prohibitive for the county so we moved on from that idea we are waiting a response for a response from the uh, regional office of the FTA on the grants that we have now and we will be moving forward with a, um, a, a reconstruction of the current terminal and expansion of that terminal to, to include easier access for the buses so they don't get bottlenecked at the uh, at the station, uh, they'll, they'll be coming in on angles so that they can leave very uh, efficiently and keep the, the routes moving in a timely basis. Uh, we will have a report for you and a timeline uh, within the very near future of the project, and it is moving forward. We just had to clear up some uh, background with the federal grants and other grants uh, to keep that project moving. So the, the, the rendering that we have gotten last year sometime, is that the final it is not. It will it will look different because we are doing a reconstruct now, but we have to determine from the federal government how much of the uh, of the current building we'll need to uh, save to, uh, to to be able to move on to the reconstruction. There, there are certain requirements that you can't remove the entire building because uh, it's, it's not at the end of its useful life now. Uh, the useful life of the building, I believe, is or is it 40 or 50? 40 years. So we're at the 22 year mark. So uh, what we'll have to do is do a reconstruction of the facility. Wasn't it, oh, sorry. Wasn't it, I don't know. Uh, no. okay. you sure? yeah. Wasn't there a talk of moving that terminal as a new ticket station for the airplane? And that terminal can be moved? There was a brief discussion about that, but uh, there. Heritage Landing has a number of grant uh, stipulations that won't allow it to be moved there. Uh, we would have to dig up and do a, a, um, a base for it there. And uh, because of Heritage Landing's past, that would be extremely costly. So it wouldn't be feasible to do that. Thank you. Noticed that uh, you omitted one nonprofit up there that uh, provides uh, roughly uh, 12,000 rides a year. It's the American Red Cross, which has been in business for 25 years. And uh, I initiated that program 25 years ago. Uh, it's a huge program. And uh, I notice now that uh, 
I'm not sure I'm going to get the name right. Disability Connection is going to start offering uh, uh, some type of service like that. I would suggest that uh, Matt's could serve the community well by uh, perhaps uh, talking to them about getting together uh, in some form of partnership. But that that's a huge program, and it, it, it does work with primarily medical, uh, but it serves a huge number of people. And, uh, it is also partially, it doesn't fund it by Medicaid, but it's funded by a number of the communities. So I think that that needs to be taken into account. Mr. Palmer said that uh, our Steven Township contributes to the bus system. Yes. If they put the new bus system out into rural areas, are they going to be expected to contribute to the bus system? Uh, I can. There is a formula that was put in place in the early 1990s for um, some townships that um, contribute to that. We have not looked at that closely since then, and so that is something that we will be looking at, but there are currently five that do contribute. But um, as we look at that, we, we need to look at um, equality as well. So that's something, it isn't something, the rates haven't changed, we've kept them the same, but it is an issue that will be looked at and we intend to look at within the next couple of years. And my goal was for the 2013 budget, but depending on what, the direction this is all going because there's changes we may hold off until we know the exact direction the transportation is going. Are there any further questions? We're down now to public comments. Is there anyone in the audience? Uh, no, you can okay. I have a question. They want to help you up here. Sure. Okay. Um, yes. Um, we have the name, sir. My name is Dave Malash. I live in the Stephen Township, and um, my question is, now how are we going to go about getting the other communities to fund this, or what other source are, is going to be used as far as nonprofit to fund outside the bus route area, because what is sort of needed is a demand response system outside the bus route area, um, so people can get, let's say, from Whitehall into Muskegon, Let's say they have a doctor's appointment, or they want to go shopping or whatever, um, or they want to go to work, let's say at money. Now, a cab would be like $37 coming from Whitehall to Mesquite. Now, um, what is going to be done in that area as far as getting the nonprofit involved and um, possibly looking at maybe um, if we're not, if we're going to do this and do this right, um, why not have a um, set of, of um, require all municipalities to pay into the system itself, make it as a requirement as part of their budget? Mr. Lodge, I think that Mr. Lucas or Mr. Coons can respond to your question, but we are also getting a technical grant assistance to uh, develop this, and we will be coordinating it throughout the, uh, the county. Okay, and so there will be um, eventually a demand response system outside of the um, five city area. Right? We don't know it at this point, but we will know when we get the finalization of the plan itself. Okay. Okay, because this is something that's sorely needed if we got to work towards this. Thank you, sir. Step over. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? If not, we'll move on to item number seven. Item for consideration, TR 1203-06, with authorization to hire a mobility coordinator. Is there any discussion on the motion? 
think it was the janitor. Uh, do we have any idea on the amount of money that's been saved for the coordinator? At this time, we do not, but uh, there would be efficiencies that would uh, be eventually trackable that we could report on in the future. It, 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 will, it, it will increase the efficiency of the system by uh, contact, putting people in, in uh, touch with uh, transportation options that will help them uh, and uh, help the the, the system work more efficiently. This must have a lot to do with what your presentation was. Okay. Thank you. My understanding is that this will not require any contribution from the county general fund. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, the motion is carried. We'll move on to TR 1203-07, authorization to issue RSPs for fiscal year 2012 airport improvement project. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion is carried. We'll move on to item number TR 1203-08 to approve engineering contracts for oversight of fiscal year 2012 capital improvement projects. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The motion is carried. We'll move on to item number eight, old business. There is no new business. Oh, I have some old business. All right, Mr. Jager, <laughs> under old business. Um, we've been, there's been a lot of controversy on where, the, where they get their funding, on the, the transportation, on the bus. Can I just have an overview of what federal, state, what the percentages are? Absolutely, we'll get that for all the And. When it gets to what our portion is, how how that part comes apart about on the um, whether they do fees, you know, ridership right, or right. all of those. Exactly. So I would like to know how that part goes. We will get that information. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All is there a uh, number 10 public comment on a new topic? <coughs> Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion for the 